welcome patrons and friends to a new program of Romanos 1.16, the Biblical and Theological Outreach Meeting for the Glory of God. I'm Juan Pablo Martinez and it is an honor to have you in our audience. This is the favorite show for all Latin Americans who love the infallible and inerrant word of God. And right now we are very, very happy to connect with our new English speaking audience. Thank you for downloading this first English episode. Romanos 1.16 are heard in the Spanish-speaking world in different Latin American countries where brothers in the faith have an enormous hunger for the Word of God. Romanos 1.16 helps so that the knowledge of God reached them effectively by the grace of God through the radio and the internet. If you want to know more, you can visit us at our official website www.jpaulomartinez.com See the link in the description of this episode. Romanos 1.16 exists thanks to Patreons who support our work. So you can support us by joining at www.patreon.com slash Martinez or simply click on the link below this audio. The title of this first English episode of Romanos 1.16 is The most effective vaccine against theological liberalism is called dispensational hermeneutics. Friends, first of all, this is not a personal criticism of Reformed Christians who are our teachers and friends. It is a reflection that involves a certain way of reading the Bible. I'll talk dispensationalism is about eschatology and ecclesiology, Its hermeneutics represents an antidote to many of the current evils in other theological areas such as Christology, Bibliology, and Soteriology. Dispensational hermeneutics is simply classical Christian hermeneutics, the literal grammatical historical method. The difference with other hermeneutical systems is that dispensationalism tries to be consistent, avoiding exceptions to the rule. It does not spiritualize or allegorize texts that do not indicate that they should be treated in such a way. Certainly, Reformed theology finds a similar shield in the confession and catechisms. If a Reformed Christian, for example, clings to a historical confession, he will be better equipped to deal with postmodernity. However, This confessional protection can be weakened if someone is seduced by a, some novel interpretation. For example, among those most interested in the new perspective on Paul, so-called new perspective on Paul, the denial that justification by faith is the gospel, I have found many Presbyterians and Baptists who acknowledge themselves as Reformed. Although they claim to appreciate the confessions, They declare that being reformed implies, quote, always being reformed, end quote, something that is supposed to mean that new theological discoveries are always welcome. The more scholarly pomp these discoveries reflect, the better. And now please listen carefully. I have never met a dispensationalist who is sympathetic to neo-orthodoxy or theological liberalism. Why is that? Because the dispensational shield does not rest primarily on confession and theological construct, but on the historical, literal, grammatical hermeneutics. The fact is that it is impossible to do contextual theology and being a dispensationalist at the same time, but you can do it if you are reformed. Why is that? For example, There are those who say that the Bible should be read with the glasses of Jesus and not with those of Paul. How do you respond to that? A confession has its limits. The only way to answer to this kind of interpretation is following literal, historical, grammatical hermeneutics. As a dear Chilean friend said, hermeneutics is the queen. Historically, it was mostly dispensationalist writers who confront liberalism in the great work, The Fundamentals, between 1910 and 1915. Remember the Philadelphia Conference, too? Many, if not most of all, was dispensationalist. 
So it is impossible to do literal readings while being consistent with uh, literal historical grammatical hermeneutics. My friends, the church right now is under fire, not only in America, but in Latin America too. The woke theologians are working very hard to make our seminaries and institutes start being full of woke theology. The best vaccinated will be those who have the most consistent Christian hermeneutics. And among these, the dispensationalists will always stand out. Being inflexive in their interpretation, it will be impossible for your mind to be penetrated by postmodern novelties. There are progressive who invoke the spiritualization or allegorization of biblical verses as a virtue. They are supposed to do to the Christian faith a favor by uncovering the riches of symbols. End quote. Something like the census plenier. A literal reading, they argue, destroys creativity and hermeneutical possibilities. We have to recognize that this is a misrepresentation or excess of the exceptions that occur within reformed hermeneutics. But where there is no exception, there are not corrupt readings of the revealed text. Friends, is that why dispensationalists are among the most ridiculed and vilified by progressism? In some, my friends, dispensational exegetes are the furthest from theological liberalism and postmodern doctrinal wiles. Not because they are smarter, not because they are more cunning, not because they are less distracted. We have to recognize that there are dispensationalists with serious confusions in our churches, but because have decided not to believe or confess anything that historical literal grammatical hermeneutic has not authorized them to receive and teach. Thank you for all your patrons and friends for listening to this program. If you are not yet a patron, join us today from $1 a month at www.patreon.com slash Martinez or simply click on the link below this audio. In this way, you will help healthy biblical and theological dissemination continue in Latin America through multiple resources in Spanish. I am Juan Paulo from Romanos 1.16. Thank you very, very much. God bless you and see you soon.